I would like to yield to um, uh, Mr. Bilirakis, uh, three minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Fellow members, I am glad to be on the House floor with you this afternoon discussing this very important topic of adult stem cell therapy. The breakthrough in technology that have been, has been already discussed, are, they're exciting, the breakthroughs. And I'm encouraged that science and medical communities are moving toward an ethical approach to treating very sick patients. This miracle of ethical adult stem cell therapy really hit home with me last month when I met with a Florida cardiologist by the name of Dr. Zanos Grecos who has been using adult stem cells to treat his very sick cardiopulmonary patients. The doctor has extraordinary results, and the best part is no embryonic stem cells are used. Dr. Grecos's groundbreaking procedure involves a simple blood draw which extracts adult stem cells from the patient's own blood. Since it is the patient's own blood, there is no possibility of the body rejecting its own stem cells. The few naturally occurring stem cells in the, bud, in the blood are cultivated into millions of regenocytes. The regenocytes are re-injected back into the patient's heart or blood vessels. They then stimulate tissue regrowth and greater blood flow to the affected area. This treatment has proven to have miraculous results, and once again, the best part is that embryos are not destroyed, and because regenocytes are extracted from the patient's own blood, they cannot be rejected by the patient's body. It was reported on CNBC.com a couple of weeks ago that this groundbreaking treatment has successfully treated heart disease, and even help the patient beat a rare metabolic condition known as Fabry disease, which would otherwise require a heart transplant. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, the government should not be in the business of funding destruction of embryonic stem cells. We should be in the business, however, of assisting bright, young, innovative doctors and scientists like Dr. Grecos who have forged a path of ethical adult stem cell therapy. I, for one, am excited about the future of this therapy and encourage this body to do all we can to support ethical adult stem cell therapy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I yield back the balance of my time. Speaker Rackus, thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Bachman. I thank you to the gentleman from New Jersey for yielding. It's exciting to see what science has wrought just in the last few days, the discoveries that have come about. But the bottom line in all of it is this. Cloning will lead to the exploitation of women. That's harmful and that's not good, especially for poor women in the United States and around the world. Women's eggs are required in the process of cloning, and the extraction technique exposes otherwise healthy women to the risk of infertility and sadly, tragically, even of death. The recent cloning scandal that we've witnessed in South Korea should serve as a warning here to those of us in the United States. Many Korean women were coerced into donating their eggs for Professor Wang's fraudulent research. Not only is it wrong, really wrong to destroy human embryos, but it's even worse to put women in a position where their health is at risk to do unethical research, especially now when we find science has taught us we don't have to. The use of the IPC, IPS cells or the adult stem cells make it unnecessary to use women's eggs while researchers who have been pushing human cloning have been seeking them. We all know that November 20, 2007, a Wisconsin researcher, a Japanese scientist, discovered they independently announced their ability to, de to derive pluripotent stem cells through the reprogramming of regular skin cells. This is a marvelous breakthrough. And then just days ago, on March 1, 2009, two research teams demonstrated they could reprogram cells without the use of potentially cancer-causing viruses. This is marvelous. 
IPS can produce a large number of both patient-specific as well as disease-specific stem cell lines. Because according to the Telegraph newspaper, tests on the reprogrammed cell lines showed they behave exactly, exactly like embryonic stem cells. These cells have already been used to make heart muscle, brain neurons, motor neurons, blood, insulin secreting cells. We are thrilled at the advances that science have made. Let's use these advances to make sure that we can further do more research that will protect people's lives, but at the same time, let's not hurt women, let's not destroy their lives, let's not destroy their fertility, and certainly we shouldn't do anything that should lead to women's death. And I thank you so much to the, for, to the gentleman from New Jersey for leading this important hour. Thank you so much, and I yield back. Ms. Bachman, thank you very much for your leadership and your very eloquent words. 